I decided about a week ago that I will do a social media detox for a foreseeable future. I haven't decided exactly how long it will be, but it will probably be for a few months now during autumn and winter. This is the third time I am doing a big social media detox. And the times I've done it before has been really good in several ways. So I wanted to sit down and go through what kind of detox I'm talking about, why I'm doing it, how I'm doing it, and then we'll see how this works out. And I will come back with a follow up video when I've been doing it for a bit of an extended period of time to see how I feel about it then and if some things have changed in me and in my life in general. The first time I did one of these social media detoxes, it was actually triggered by a friend who told me that he thought I was spending quite a bit of time on Instagram. And he asked me if I had considered logging out of Instagram. At the time I thought it was a crazy idea because who would log out of Instagram? Like you spend so much time there watching the stories, keeping in touch with your friends and you really feel connected with a lot of people through Instagram. But I just wanted to prove him wrong so I decided to uninstall the app and that ended up being a three months without social media. And that was a long period and I logged out both from Instagram and from Facebook. And then about a year later I decided to do it again and I was logged out for about six months in total both from Instagram and Facebook. This time I have just been logged out for one week so far but uh, we will see how I feel about it and how long I decide for it to be. I figure though that the first few days of the social media detoxes are for sure the hardest. So once you get past the first four or five days, it starts to get easier and you kind of start forgetting that those services were there from the beginning. This time around, I decided to do a two stage social media detox where first I removed and logged out of Instagram, both on my phone and on the laptop. I removed and logged out of Facebook both on the phone and on the laptop, but I kept Messenger, WhatsApp, and I'm still logged into LinkedIn on my work computer. One of the main things though when I've done this before has been that the time I used to spend on Instagram and Facebook on my phone would almost immediately be moved onto another app or another service online. So whether that is checking my personal finances or reading the news a lot or obsessively checking my YouTube stats, the time on my phone would still be there. Therefore, this time around, I decided after two days of removing the social media apps and realizing that this is happening again, that I would remove both the YouTube stats app the home queue app that I use to look for apartments, as well as my personal finance app. So I can only do those things when I'm by my laptop. When I've done this experiment before, there's still been quite a lot of time that I spent on my phone. I just kind of moved from doing it on one app to doing it on another app. And that doesn't really make sense. It kind of defeats the purpose. I really want to reduce the time I spend on my phone and I feel by removing those replacement things that I'm able to do it. There is still one thing that I have a hard time completely staying away from and that is YouTube. Mainly because I upload so many videos to YouTube and I get a lot of inspiration from other YouTubers. But what I started doing here is that I don't watch any videos during the work weeks. When I browse the YouTube feed, I would add some videos to my watch later playlist. And then I would take one or two times during the weekend and watch through all of the clips that I added to my watch later playlist. And this has actually been working really well. Another thing that I really think work well is to add some positive replacements. So if you have apps that you want to use more, then make sure to put them in an as visible position as possible on your phone home screen. And for example, this could be a podcast app where you listen to some really valuable podcasts. It could be your music app if you like listening to music and that gives you value. 
It could also be a book app. So instead of reading news online, you would be reading a book and actually getting some knowledge. But one of the major things I started doing now since I started this social media detox is to actually leave the phone behind. But I would go out to have a coffee and I might bring my e-reader or bring a notebook and just journal a little bit or just sit and watch some people passing by which is such a lovely alternative to just be scrolling and constantly updating stats on my phone. And I feel like this will actually make a big difference for my mental health. And I think that's quite important now in these times that we're in right now. I want to be connected to my friends, but the kind of connection that you get from being on Instagram and Facebook is so superficial that I actually feel that it completes the opposite of what it's supposed to complete. I'd much rather have a quality phone or video conversation with a friend for 30 minutes than spending the 30 minutes scrolling Instagram and seeing some updates and then feeling that I have to push out some things of what is going on in my life, which I actually don't think give me that much value to share. Two more things that I really wanted to recommend here is that if you feel that you are using Facebook for groups or events and that is an important part of your life, you can use a plugin called Newsfeed Eradicator. You install that in your browser and then your newsfeed gets completely removed but you can still use those features of events and groups. So I've been using that for several years and I never access the newsfeed on my computer when I go to facebook.com. The other app or plugin that you can use is called Blocksite. It's available both as a computer plugin to the browser, where you can just enter the websites that you don't want to reach, and then it blocks all of these websites for you. It is also available as an app for iPhone and Android. And there you can enter what websites you don't want to be able to use and what apps you don't want to be able to use. And this is also really helpful to kind of stay away from those replacement websites that you might go to instead of visiting your social media accounts. I am genuinely happy to be on another social media detox. It's been about a year since last time I was doing it. And I will make a follow-up video to come back to how I felt after some months on the social media detox. If you want to see that video and other content that I'm putting out here, please subscribe to this channel and then I will see you in the next video. Have a really nice day. Bye bye.